Welcome to the GCN Tech Show, and we're bringing it to you from Mallorca, as Chris, Ollie, and I are here for the GCN event, and it's the first one ever. I'm quite excited about it, but this video is nothing to do with that. It's all about tech. Yes, it is. Yep, and this week we've got Catherine's footage from the North American Handmade Bicycle Show where she chatted away to an award winner, not to mention some new wide wheels, and apparently one of the biggest changes in cycling in the last 30 years has been revealed. It's been announced and according to Trek, it's one of the biggest revelations in cycling in the last 30 years, Wave Cell. A collapsible liner which is going to be fitted inside of selected Bontrager helmets. The reason for this is that when you have a crash, you tend to move around with lots of twists and turns and Wave Cell actually absorbs that energy in multiple directions, as opposed to standard EPS foam helmets that absorbs it in just one specific point. But according to Trek, the actual layers of the material material move independently, they flex, they crumple, and then they glide in that order. And get this, they've even done some research too that shows that this wave cell structure actually prevents concussion 99 times out of 100 with common cycling accidents. So that's absolutely great to hear that they're reducing concussion. Now we're going to head over though to Catherine at the North American Handmade Bicycle Show where she's got some information on plasma treatment on frames. It's a brand new technology that's come out of the University of Dublin in collaboration with Plasma Bound and the guys at 51 in Dublin are lucky enough to be using it on their bicycles. Although it's been designed with the aerospace and automotive industries in mind, 51 are using it here on their bikes to remove this top layer of resin from the carbon fibre tubes before joining, so it produces a really precise and reliable result and I'm sure saves them some time too. And you can really tell the difference just from feeling it or even just looking at it. Sounds like interesting stuff that. Now more tech and well 3T have announced they will shortly be releasing some new wheels to match up with their Strada and Exploro frame sets. They're going to be called the Discus C45 wide. The 45 stands for the depth of them, 45 millimetres. But what is the standout part of these wheels certainly has to be the width. So measuring externally 32 millimetres and internally 25 millimetres. Now this wider internal stance means that if you were to fit say a 28 millimeter tire onto them, they can actually be inflated up to about 33 millimeters wide, which is great for those of you who want the increase in comfort. But apparently they've even done some testing too, and they've been shown to not actually have any detriment to aerodynamics. And in fact, they're just as aerodynamic as some 60 millimeter carbon wheels. So there we are, if you're looking to go, well, a little bit more comfortable and also a little bit faster, maybe that's your thing. Don't have a release date as of yet, but keep your eyes peeled because they will be hitting shops any day soon. More tech later. It's time now for our main talking point. Now, earlier in the week, I was able to chat to Dr. Xavier Disley of AeroCoach. Now, AeroCoach is a company that helps athletes improve their aerodynamic performance and get optimized. Now, Xavier has actually helped over 750 50 cyclists become more slippery through the air. So I figured he'd be a great person to speak to about what's the best bang for your buck things you can do to get faster. So here's what he had to say. Thanks for joining us, Zav. No problem. Um, always a pleasure. So something we get asked a lot is what should I upgrade in order to get faster? What's the most sort of bang for my buck upgrades? and also what's the priority list in terms of what should I be upgrading before I upgrade other things. So you, you work with a lot of athletes to make them faster. I figured you'd be a good person to ask. So the most important thing that we find consistently is that your position on the bike is absolutely crucial in terms of your aerodynamic drag and by extension, the performance that you're gonna have in races and sport teams. The rider makes up around 80% of the drag, so making sure that you're holding a good position is going to make you a hell of a lot faster. Um, we know that holding a higher position, so if you've got your hands on the tops and sitting up, or you've got your hands on your hoods and you're sitting up uh, straight, is going to be a lot slower than if you're a bit more crouched down and you keep your torso angle a bit lower. So the next thing is still related to the rider. Again, you know, the rider's the majority of the drag and it's your clothing. So if you have very flappy clothing, it's going to slow you down. 
no matter what speed you're riding, as long as you're not going uphill really slow. Aerodynamics are a big factor in cycling. So have tight fitting clothing. Um, so make sure that you don't have baggy bits flapping around or if you have a, a jacket on or something that you keep it zipped up so it's a bit tighter. Um, that's going to be really, really important. So the new Bling bike and the nice set of wheels comes pretty much straight away after those two things. Right. Um, so after the rider and their clothing, um, upgrading the, the frame of your bike. So aero frames are getting really good these days um, and wheels as well. Um, there's certainly things with the bike that you can feel. You don't really feel the effect of having a slightly you know, flappy jersey on necessarily, but you can certainly feel the effect of having nicer wheels or deep section wheels. You'd put bike and wheels after clothing and after position, but what kind of proportion is the, is the bike and the wheels? So you're looking at around 20 to 25% of the drag coming from the bike rather than the rider, which is more like sort of 80%, sometimes 75%. Um, interestingly, a smaller rider is gonna need to make take more care over making sure their bike setup is, is more important than a larger rider, because a larger rider is gonna be causing a lot more drag from their body and the bike is gonna be a relatively less proportion of that. Making sure that the frame fits you, I think is crucial. So you can get an aero frame, but slow yourself down by getting the frame that's the wrong size or the wrong geometry, or doesn't handle the way that you like it and you can't you know, make it go down the road as yeah. fast as you used to. Uh, wheels, aero wheels, compared with non-aero wheels, are always gonna be faster. It's pretty much, I'd say, even, but you're, it's an instant boost with the aero wheels, but you have to be a bit more careful with choosing the right frame for you to make sure that you get the right geometry to allow you to hold the position that you need. The next one on the list would be tires, and I think that tires... Yeah, but that not, that's not an aero upgrade. It's not an aero upgrade, but it makes so much importance to your overall speed. You, if you go from a, a very slow training tire to a faster tire, then at 30 k an hour you could be looking at five six seven eight watts per tire um, at the top end so if you do the if you do the numbers and the physics of it if you're traveling at less than let's say 25 kilometers an hour for a very long extended period of time then you're not going to be seeing any improvement from upgrading the aerodynamics of you or your bike and lightness will win but when you do these long rides they don't finish at the top of a mountain and then you just ride from the bottom to the top and stop, you're having to go down, you're having to ride on the flats at some point. And the aero, uh, the, the penalty from having slightly heavier but more aero componentry is going to far outweigh just having lightweight kit. Right, more new tech now. And some of you may well remember that back at the Tour Down Under I got my grubby little hands on a pair of Rafa prototype shoes. Good news, they have announced the release of two new pairs of shoes, the Classic and Explore. So the Classic shoe, that's basically the shoe I took a look at on the feet of Lachlan Morton. So it's very much a traditional road race style shoe. So it's got some laces on there and then a single Velcro strap at the bottom and a carbon sheet on the inside of the thermoplastic sole. Whereas the Explore shoe, it looks very, very similar to it other than the fact it's got a rugged rubber tread pattern on the bottom there. So it's ideal for those of you who like to venture off-road and I guess they're hoping that it fits somewhere on that gravel spectrum. Now we're going to go back to Catherine at the North American Handmade Bicycle Show where she's been chatting away to an award-winning frame builder as well as an engineer behind a pretty cool product. Thanks John. So number two on our hot tech list is here at Ceramic Speed and I'm joined by Alex who is one of six students who are at university tasked by Ceramic Speed to come up with a more efficient drivetrain system. Yeah, so we thought we had a really exciting concept. We had some really good testing numbers and we thought there was a lot of potential for this. But we wanted to make sure that the world thought it was as cool as we thought it was. And we wanted to make sure that there was a, an open arms of reception to moving forward with this concept. So we built this concept bike to show what we were working on and show it to the world at Eurobike. Great. And now you've had that huge response. Is the aim to put it into production? What comes next? Yeah, so we're taking that one step at a time. Before we can talk about production, we need to solve some fundamental issues first, especially with regards to shifting and durability. So we have a team working on that right now. We have a team of six people moving forwards with this project. And as we develop and solve those problems, then we can look towards the future of production. That's fantastic. So how exactly does this compare to a conventional chain system? What is the difference? Yeah, so a fully optimized chain system can reach um, a level of about 98 to 98.5% efficiency at its best. And testing of this shows that we can reach efficiency of about 99.2% at its best. 
That's a pretty big difference, really, on that scale, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a, a big difference, especially when you're talking about marginal gains and, and small seconds in racing. Uh, any difference that we can find is what we're going for, and as it becomes harder and harder to improve a chain, you have to look in other ways to make a faster bike. That's certainly what you've done here. Thank you very much. You. It's really exciting. And now for something totally different, number three on our hottest tech list is this. It's Winged Victory from Porter Cycles, or Tom, the builder that we have here. Now, when we last looked at the bike, it was whilst it was being judged, so we didn't actually see that Tom has won Best New Builder Award. How does that feel? I honestly can't say how exciting it is to have a group of peers like look at my work and think that I'm doing something of value that is like, you know, worthy of being called best of the new builders. So I understand that you haven't been making bicycles for that long, but you are a professional metal worker by trade, is that right? That is true. So how does making bikes differ to other projects you've had in the past? I think that the stuff that I do for fabrication work is very much based on somebody having a need and me being able to fill it and they have a design, they have a budget and um, you know it might be going in a restaurant, it might be to display artwork or a prototype uh, and when it comes to the bicycles it's really more my own vision and what I want to do and putting something that I consider a completely just a beautiful object into the world that's functional for somebody else's life. So in a sense, the difference is that um, somebody else is asking me to make something in one case, and somebody else is asking me to share something that I want to put out in the world with them in the other. This is an incredible piece of art, as well as a functional bicycle. What would be your top two, top three parts of it, if you could narrow it down that much? It's tough to say, but I, I think the obvious answer would be the lugs. Uh, they're all fabricated from scratch out of straight gauge 4130 steel tubing. Um, they're smoothed out and then drawn over and cut out to be these wing patterns. The lugs are really important to me on this bike. Um, I think the rack has gotten an amazing amount of reactions. It's an Art Deco designed sort of fountain motif um, that I sort of stumbled upon and realized actually in the end how Art Deco inspired it really was to begin with. And then the chain guard uh, became sort of a focal point I spent three days basically drawing different Art Deco designs and, and trying to come up with something that would work as a chain guard, which is a detail I'd never done before. And I sort of, after a few days of drawing them, my brain just sort of broke and I found this pattern. And then I spent another day drawing this pattern and, and it's, to me, it's one of the standout elements of the bike. So it's taken you two months to build this bike. What's next? I dedicated two months to this bike and that was uh, this past summer. And since then, it has been uh, an effort to make a series of new bikes for a group of different clients uh, and develop a, a touring bike for myself so that I can basically bike home from here in Sacramento, California to Brooklyn, New York after the show. Fantastic, well enjoy your ride home. Thank you so much, thanks for having me. Since we are in Mallorca, we've chosen to make it easier for ourselves. We're going to do our favorite bits of the show, which means we're going to start with screw riding upgrades by upgrades. upgrades. If you want to be in with the chance of winning the amazing apron that Ollie bangs on about every single week oh, he does. in the office, then don't forget to use the uploader tool and log them into the screw riding upgrades by upgrades. But first, Chris, we need to announce last week's yeah. winner. And it was between Jolly's custom physique first, and then it was against Chris's bargain bike from Australia. And with 55% of the votes, it was Chris's. And look at that. Ooh. Right then, this week we have Ken from San Francisco with his Lightspeed Classic. Ken always wanted a Lightspeed when he was younger, but he couldn't afford one. I know that feeling. Fast forward to three years ago and Ken bought his frame off eBay. It had campy 10 speed, but terrible components. Otherwise, Ken wanted to have a faux vintage bike and the upgrade got out of, out of hand. Oh, blimey. Keeping it retro, Ken got some Campag record 10-speed oh, Thai carbon. Nice. nice. Including a full Thai cassette. Blimey. Down tube shifters are indexed using the internals from a Campy TT shifter. Clever. Brake levers are hard to find carbon ones. Yep. Campy Thai seat posts, they're rare. A look at the quill stem. Oh, my goodness. And it let's see it. Yes. That there, does look good, doesn't it? And there it is now. I mean, I like the paint scheme on that. Oh, lovely. What are those wheels? Those guys? Campo Campo wheels, yeah. Oh. Toe straps as well, I see it. But 10 times better bars. Oh, yeah, I like to be show. fair, fantastic job. That's going to be hard, isn't it? That's going to that's gonna be hard to beat. But Kev is up against Robert from Poole in Dorset in the UK. 
which is actually a really nice part of the world. Robert bought a single speed to use as a commuter. It was on one with deep rims on spongy brakes and bull bars, and Robert thought it was a prime candidate for an upgrade. First thing was the paint. Stripped back, rubbed down, and resprayed in Robert's garage. A deep red base coat was applied first. That was followed by a few hours of masking and several coats of metallic silver paint. Robert decided to rebrand it with Trek logos as their other bikes are an Amonda and a Domain. So it had to match. The old chain was replaced with a sturdy Arca one. Archer. The old chain was replaced with a sturdy Archer one. The bars and stems swapped for custom items. And the single brake replaced with a pair of old 105s Robert had kicking about in the box. A set of EC90 full carbon forks were added to shave over a kilo. And then, to finish off, with a set of handmade wheels. Oh, Robert, that does look cool. I like so the paint job. Look at that. It's a transformation, isn't it? He's done well there with that red and silver paint job. Which one do you reckon you choose? Well, that's a difficult one. And to be honest, it's not up to us, it's up to you. And you can vote in the poll, which is just up in the top left of our screen. Top left for you, top right. Yeah. Your you, top right, you get, our you, top left. You get the idea. Time now for Bike of the Week. But first off, we need to go through last week's contenders. Yes, we do. It was between Annemiek from Floaten and her Scott Foyle and Nika Roach's Cervelo R5. It's quite close, actually, in the end. 57% of you went for Annemiek from Floaten's Scott Foyle. Good choice, to be fair. Good choice. Yeah. I yeah, did like the look of that bike. Yeah, it's cool. But this week, it's between the new giant propel of Greg Van Avermaet. Gold, of course, to celebrate his victory in the Rio Olympics. Shimano Durace group set, including disc brakes and a pair of Overchieve wheels and Vittoria tyres. Nice. It's up against another Olympic champs bike. This one, a Pinarello track bike belonging to Elia Viviani. A pair of Durace 9000 road cranks on there too with a single. I love how it's been made to suit him as well because, yeah, it does look good. But who's it going to be? Greg or Elia? Ooh, they're interesting choices. Yeah, they're good. I'm. I'm I don't tall. know what, yeah, I don't know. They're what quite I'm different bikes. Obviously. Anyway, you know what to do. Top right of your screen right now. Right now, it is time for your bike vault. Yeah, it is. But we got a bit of a problem. Yeah, we do. We have no bell here in Mallorca. So instead, we're going to raise a glass and have a sip. But we're not allowed to chime it until we give a super nice. I like that rule. It's good. Yeah. Right then, let's get stuck in. Daniel from Cape Town, South Africa. Ooh, a, po a prototype fault made from engineered ash and beach, Durace piece to group set and a Brooks saddle. Oh, oh my goodness. I have to say that is a work of art and deserves to be in a museum. It does, doesn't it? Mm. Like, or an art gallery. Yeah. That is insane. That is, that's definitely a super nice. I've, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Good there work. you go. Right, next up is Dave from Rochester, New York. With a Vilio Cento 1 SL. While out on ride, Dave was passing these Belgian horses and rushed to set up the bike to take a pick with them in the background. And when it turned around, they had all lined up there at the fence. Either they loved the bike, they thought he had food, or they were photobombing him. I love how one's mooning him. <laughs> yeah. Either uh, way. Hey, come on, we're, we're in Mallorca. Let's super nice? Super nice. It's a super nice. Old drink. It's a good drinking game, this, I like it. <laughs> right, next up we have Arno from Berlin with his Bonotto Modelo 5000. Very nice. Yeah. I love the yeah, Tamil tyres. Yep, I love the classic lines of the frame. I love the chromed I forks like and seat stays. But I love the modern group set as well. It's quite a good spin it, on a retro classic. Yeah. This ticks quite a few boxes for me, James. You? Yep. All right, let's Come give it on. a super nice. Oh yeah, drink. Right then, moving on to Andrew in Cap de Formentor. Yeah, in Mallorca, which nice. is not far away from us, is it? We actually went there. Oh, I have a thing. feeling how this one's going to go. Oh! <laughs> it, and it's Celeste. It's sunnier there than it was there. Bianchi, there. zip wheels. Look oh, at that. Vision aero cockpit. Ortega group set. Nice. A light, a light on the back, and vision handlebars. And that's, that backdrop is well just framed, isn't insane. Well-framed, isn't it? Are you feeling it? I'm feeling, I'm it, feeling it. Now we've got one from Todd in Boulder, Colorado. Amazing place, to be fair. Have you been there? I've not, but I nearly did. Is that the same? No, I don't know, it counts, does it? Look at that. Ooh. Look at that paint job. Yeah. What is that? Well, it's um, 
the Green Rocket is 195 centimetres tall. The Gravel Traveller. Yeah. And it's called the Green Rocket. And I can see why. Look at 50 that. 50mm tyres on it. Mm. Full length mud guards, which means you're not going to get dirty. Stem and seat post match. No, that. Yeah, and he, he's obviously taken that with a good camera. Todd, you know what? That is a cool bike. And I mean, it's super nice from us. And we finished that off well, haven't we? we? We haven't finished our glass, but we're getting there. Thanks to all of you who have sent in some really amazing bikes. And yeah, look, we've given super nice to every bike there. It's a good bike vault this week. It's a good bike vault. Yeah. If you want to have your bike featured in the bike vault, don't forget to use the uploader tool, which is in the description below. So there you have it. We have come to the end of this week's tech show, and Chris and I have very much enjoyed bringing it to you. It's been a good one, hasn't it? From New Yorker, yeah. It's yeah. been lovely. What a place. I've enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy this video as much as we did, then give it a big thumbs up. Maybe raise a glass? Yeah, raise a glass, yeah. yeah. And if you want to watch another tech video, why don't you check that one down there? Oh, I like that one. Should we go for a swim? No, it looks too cold. Yeah, it does look pretty cold. Like, that's why I'm wearing my hat, to be honest.